Namatu, Ratana de Yasa, the pay my home to the trip and jam, the Buddha, the Dhamma Sankar, and venerable monks and friends in the Dhamma. I'm Prama Pasagon Bio Parso, the General Secretary of the Council of Thai Buddhist Monk in the UK and Ireland. I'm now staying at the Buddha Batiba Temple. So this Dharma discussion is held by the Council of Thai Buddhist Monks in the UK and Ireland every second Thursday of a month. We have a Dharma discussion in Thai language, hosted by Prakho Sankarak Otita Jaro, the abbot of Wat Putaram in Northampton. And on the fourth Saturday of each month, we have the discussion in English from 8 to 9 p.m. And this program is held to support our friends and members because now, although the lockdown is easing, but the place of virtues like the Buddhist temple, the malls or the church are not fully operating. So in order to support our friends and members, we would like to organize something that is useful and beneficial for our friends and those who are interested in Buddhism. And tonight we have two guests. So the first one is Tanajan Parad Vithit Panyakun, or you may know him well as Dr. Lao Panyasiri. And he's now the acting chairman of the Council of Thai Buddhist Monks of the UK and Ireland, and also the abbot of Wat Ma Thad in King's Bombay, Staffordshire. And the second guest is Tanajan Kongrit, or his official title. Prakko Samo Kongrit Ratanat Wando, and he's a Dharma to the monk from the Amravati Buddhist Monastery. So now I just would like to invite Ajahn Lao to say greeting to our friends and members who are watching Facebook's live now. Yeah, please unmute yourself, Ajahn. You don't unmute yourself yet. Unmute yourself. Yeah, sorry, Ajahn, you have to unmute yourself. We don't hear you. Uh, good evening, friends in the Dhamma and venerable monks throughout the uh, United States Kingdom and the member of the Council of the Thai uh, Council of Buddhist. A Thai Buddhist monk in United Kingdom and Ireland. This is first uh, the program for the council that we are going to uh, discuss about any kind of the Dhamma and also the history or at least to be able to let our monks know that we are doing here. I am pleased that to be here this evening I am from Wat Mahathat in King's Bombay. At the moment, I'm the acting the chairman of the, uh, the Thai, uh, the Council of the Thai Buddhist monks on behalf of the most venerable Long Pho, Pate Pavana Mukon, who is the abbot of Wat Puttapati. I'm pleased today that I, uh, we have the meeting last uh, last month that we should be able to talk about Buddhism, about the work of our monks in who, who live outside of Thailand, especially in England. And today, Than Pramahapasakon, as a secretary of the council, is very uh, kind to set up, set up the work and also the program for us. So I'm pleased that I am here today and quite happy uh, to 
take part in the question, whatever, and also to cooperate the work that we are doing together for Buddhism in UK. So it's for a message from me today. Uh, thank you, Ajahn. Thank you, Ajahn. So I, and for my convenience, I just would like to address you as Ajahn now, rather than your official name, Parad Mithit Panjakun, because for monks and when you uh, give and the royal title, your name can be a bit long. So for my convenience and also for the convenience of the audience, I think it would be good to just address Ajahn Lao as Ajahn Lao. Yeah. And yes, I'm um, uh, no, no need to worry. Yeah. Yeah, okay, Tanajan Kongrit, um, would you like to say a greeting to our members and friends? And please unmute yourself, you need to unmute yourself. It seems that your microphone is still off, so you need to unmute yourself first. Yeah, I think you can speak now. Namaskaram, everyone, and greeting to everyone that joined the meeting today. My name is Ajahn Kumit. I stay in Maravati Buddhist Monastery in Hamel Hampstead, is uh, north of London. It's about 45 minutes away from London. And I stay here since 2001, and it's about 19 years now. And I'm really pleased to join this uh, meeting and join this program. Anything that I can share with you, I really appreciate to chat. Okay, thank you. Thank you to both of you. Um, friends and members who are watching us on Facebook now, please feel free to chat on your um, Facebook page. And this is the way to spread the Dharma. And the topic for tonight's discussion is how Buddhism contribute to the Western society. Um, well, from my memory, Thai Buddhism was introduced to, to the UK nearly 60 years, but early before that, Buddhism was known to the British people, perhaps to the um, scholar or to the um, uh, students who were interested in Eastern philosophy. And later on, that later on, when monks were invited to conduct teachings, meditation in the UK, and Buddhism seemed to grow, yeah, seemed to grow. I have been here since 2006. Yeah. Um, I actually came to study at the University of Bristol, and now I'm still, I'm still studying for PhD at King College of London. Right, so let's discuss the topic that may be interested, uh, may be interesting, sorry, may be interesting um, um, for our audience. I just would like to ask Ajahn Lau first, and could you please tell us when and how was Buddhism from Thai tradition? So we want to talk about a Thai tradition, and we, 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 we learned that the Chilangan Buddhism came to the UK before Thai, Thai tradition. Yeah, I know that. But tonight, we will focus on the Thai tradition. So the question is, when and how was Buddhism from Thai tradition introduced to the UK? Could you please answer this question? Thank you very much, Tan Paramahapasakon. It's very good that we are Thai monks and we know that Thai tradition came to England uh, with two, uh, two areas. This is very, uh, I would like to talk about the how uh, Buddhism from Thailand came to England, especially uh, the history of Buddha Patipa temple involving. Um, according to the, uh, the, the history of Wat Buddha Patipa, which I uh, once when it came to Wimbledon at the time it was 1998. So I uh, study and look at the history of Buddhism in uh, Wimbledon Temple and how it came to uh, to England. Uh, first, I learned from the the master, which is my upachaya, uh, Prasiddhimuni. Uh, 
คุณพระราชธิมดี um, he's very um, uh, he was he was sent to uh, uh, to Burma by the b a d m a h a t a t the abbot is คุณสมเด็จอาสภะเถระ at the time พระพิมรธรรม sent him to to study or learn meditation in at Burma when he came back to Wat Mahathat and then at the time that he was invited by s a n k a t r a s t I must say that s a n k a t r a s t is also founded in England for many years and of course these uh, s a n k a t r a s t English people interest in Buddhism so he was invited uh, by s a n k a t r a s t English s a n k a t r a s t So that at time it was just uh, 1964 at the time that he came to uh, Wat Phut Pathi. In fact, it was in h a m m e r h a m s t e a d h a m s t e a d Yeah, in h a m s t e a d it was the temple name is what. Uh, uh, so when when start to get there, there were quite a number of the uh, the monks who came at the time uh, from j a k u n p r a m a h a v i c h i t t i s a t h a t o h a m along to support him as translator. So it was 1964. That is many years back. You can see the Hammer Hempstead or Buddha Vihara Hempstead Temple is the c h a n c h a k u n p a r a s i t i m u n i who came along with Mahavijit. Uh, Mahavijit is from w a t s a g a t e and p r a r a s i t i m u n i is from Wat Mahathat. So they came together to uh, England on 25th of Uh, May, it was 1964. So this is the how it start because a lot of English people interest in meditation at the time, and he's very good at teaching. He very good at meditation, uh, although he uh, he can't speak Tha English, but he got translation. So how the Buddhism start in how the Thai uh, tradition start is it like this? So when it came to Chin is. The name of the temple at the time, after Thai people stay with Hammerstead together for a little while, and the Thai embassy, and along with quite a number of the people who interest in Buddhism, and said to uh, uh, the Honorable c h o d o k p a r a s i t i m u n i why don't we have our own temple? So they decide to say, okay, our temple should be have to be Thai temple. So they start to searching for the temple. It was in Christchurch Road, it, it she, in c h i not not in Richmond, not far from Wimbledon at the moment. So they start the temple there. It's number 99 Christchurch Road. I heard this uh, temple maybe before, but I never been there until uh, four or five years ago. So I visit this temple and look at the building. It's very good with the own uh, Buddha p a t i p a Temple and given the name by the king. Uh, of Thailand, the King Ram Manai, who uh, they they uh, and was queen, went to visit the temple and opened the temple there. This is how it start. And after we the Buddha p a t i p a Temple at the time was there for many years until uh, the year 1974. I think that is the time that the temple looking for the place to have a new center or new place. So they came to see, and they found the uh, Barakin uh, House, which is w i m b l e d o n Temple at the moment, number 44, uh, number 14. Uh, so that is Buddha p a t i p a Temple moved in 1990, uh, 1975 to the present time. This temple, it was a uh, big, big house and also beautiful garden. So this is something that we we learn from how the British. Buddhism at who invite the Buddhist monk from Thailand to start meditation. Actually, I believe this temple more or less the same as the same as the founder, who the the British uh, English a n k a t r a t who went to invite uh, Venerable uh, p a r a s i t i Muni from Wat Mahathat, and also after Prajapun p a r a s i t i Muni who left the temple uh, from uh, Hampstead. And moved to Wimbledon, no, moved to um, Ichin uh, in Richmond. And after that, they might have opportunity to go and invite the other uh, master or the teacher. Uh, that that, that I, I, will, I will I will not talk about that yet. So then Wimbledon Temple, 
start by most memorable พระราชทิมุนี and after that พระท่านเจ้าคุณพระราชวินีเว้นแบบทุกไทยแลนด์ and then พระมหาวิจิตรติดทัตโต take over to be the head monk for little while and after that he uh, when he left and then ท่านเจ้าคุณ before หลวงพ่อพระราชวิริยาภรณ์ or ท่านหลวงพ่อเกษม invited to Wimbledon so it was พระมหาสมบูรณ์สิทธิญาโน uh, take Uh, acting the head monk for little while before หลวงพ่อพระราชวิริยาภรณ์เกษม turned to be the abbot the third abbot and then the, after this is how Buddhism uh, from Thailand start by invite, invited by the English Sankha Trust invite the most memorable uh, to Run the, uh, to teach meditation along with his secretary, and after that, the Thai embassy helped to set up the temple, and then finally he um, they moved to Ichin, and after that have looked at a new place, and after that the temple in Wimbledon have a lot of works for the uh, the the monks as Sunday school and the the Dhamma school and meditation. So Thai tradition or Thai Buddhism run in this way, not only meditation alone, help in society, help the people who need in the society in meditation and with school visit. This all of this is part of what put up a cheap activities that it was 19, uh, uh, 1975 until uh, 19. Uh, 98-99 at that time so the buddhism in england spread more and more and more so many many temples now then to come to be the past of our council so this is my briefly about how buddhism come from thailand thai tradition to england by english Sankha trust and then move to our tradition itself not only meditation so Urban temple like Wimbledon temple involving with society with Sunday school and everything. So not only meditation alone. Thank you. Thank you, Ajahn. Thank you. Um, so we have learned the history of the Buddha Patipa temple and how Thai Buddhism was introduced to the UK. And now I would like to come back to Tandajan Kung Rit. Um, I thought after the Buddha Patipa temple. Um, Long Pao Cha was invited by also by the English Sangha Trust. And I'm not quite sure about the year. Could you please recall, recall us when Ajahn, when Long Pao Cha was invited to the UK? And because the um, picture of him and his fellow monks walking on arms round in London was very famous. And one thing that I still remember um, on the day of his royal cre uh, cremation ceremony, Ajahn Satyan Pong Wanabok, who was the MC on the national uh, broadcast uh, television, he mentioned that Long Pao Cha was invited to England and then he spoke to the um, Buddhist disciples that he wanted to go on arms row. But the lay people said, don't go out Long Pao because here's England, you won't get the rice. Yeah, they, 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 they spoke in Thai. Which means that you, although you go on arms row, but you won't get any rights from the people because the people here were not Buddhists. They didn't understand the culture of Buddhism. And if you go on arms row, you will get nothing. And instead, Lung, Lung Pao Chai just said, well, I just want to go out to, I did, I did go out to get food, to get rice, but I, want to go out to get the people. So could you please tell us the, um, the history of Lung Pao Cha visit to the UK? Uh, I'm not sure that uh, in the Sankar Trust is the same trust or not, but I think the name is, uh, is the same name. But, uh, in the Sankar Trust start by um, the monks who have the idea to bring Buddhism to to the UK. His name is Kapila Wato. Kapila Wato. Screen to Kapila Wato. 
I think the same, the same name, I think. I'm not sure how I can, I, yeah, how I can think Ajala, I, perhaps Ajala, could you please confirm this? From, from, my, from my understanding, and it is the same English Sangha trust, because when Gabela Wato left, and then Ananda Bodhi, and who was a Canadian monk received ordination in Burma, he went to study meditation under the guidance of Long Po Chodo University. When he came to England, he took over the um, Hampstead Bihara, and then he invited Long Po Chodo or Prasitimuni to conduct meditation. Yeah, from my understanding, I thought it is the same English Sangha Trust. Perhaps Ajala, yeah. could you please confirm? Yeah. That? Well, it's in fact, for my study at the time when I did my research, it's the same trust. By saying that, because English Sangha Trust at the time interest in meditation a lot. And when uh, Venerable uh, Pala Sitimuni, who the first Thai monk who came to English Sangha Trust in Hampstead at the time, and also Than Pra, uh, Ajahn Satyan Pong, he was a monk, came to the temple to help uh, as well. So this is something that we like to confirm that the same English Sangha Trust. Why so interesting? Because the English group interest in meditation a lot. And the first attempt to invite Venerable uh, Parasitimuni because he's very expert or very good at teaching of meditation master, but he's not from the, the uh, not from the, um, the forest tradition. He come from the urban tradition. And also the way in which he teaches, it can be uh, widened in Thai society as well. But in this Angkatrat is interest uh, in uh, meditation direction uh, that, uh, uh, the, uh, directly to meditation alone, not another culture involving. So it, it's the same name that the English Sankha Trust is started in 1956, if not it early than that, because um, Kapilawado at that time he went to Wat Paknam and ordained with four bhikkhu, including Roman uh, Lumpo. And later on, he, he moved to Wat Paban Park. Yes, this one, if you can see my screen, my screen is the, that this one, Kapilawado and uh, Panyawato, Lumpo Panyawato, and the early group. And it formed in 1956, I think the Sankar Trust. Yeah. Uh, thank you. That is very, uh, very interesting. It's very good. We talk the same things, maybe the period that they're involving, maybe a different time. However, if you talk about Hampstead Buddha Vihara, that's also in Hampstead. And the person involved is only one, that uh, the venerable monks that you mentioned from Wat Pak Nam too. So the interest in the tradition of Thai, uh, including Wat Pak Nam and Wat uh, Ban Tat in uh, Lung Kho from Habur at the time too. So, so you can see, when Lung Po Cha came to this country, it's a different time from Venerable Lung Po Parat Sittimuni. So should be at least about 10 years different, I think. Yeah, from my research, yeah, sorry, from my research, uh, Gabriel Pato went to receive an ordination at Wat Pak Nam and Lung Po Sot of Wat Pak Nam was his preceptor, but yes. there was some kind of um, class between Lung Po Sot and Gabriel Pato and then and he went to Wat Thad Pong in Bangkok. And he was um, suggested by some of the monks there. Perhaps you can go to uh, Wat Pa Ban Tat. Uh, Wat Pa Ban Tat. So since then, and he followed Long, Long Ta Maha Boa lineage. Yeah, until I think he spent the rest of his life there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Perhaps Ajahn, Ajahn Kongrip, um, could you please tell us more about the history of uh, Chithad or Amaravati Monastery? Um, I think this would be interesting for many people. Uh, after Kapilawado, he moved, moved back to London and then he, not so long in his role, but his intention to set up the English Sankar Trust to, to provide the Charity or some place that to support the to support the monk, and then he tries, he tried, but he could not he could not do it by himself because he had doesn't have any training. And he come back and he stay, and then George Shaw, the one that the the 
secretary of the English Central Trust at that time. He met Kapila Wado at that time. He called, they call him, know him as Kapti. In Kapti, he very beautiful voice, very good speaker, and teach meditation. And for George Sharp, really wonderful to meet him, especially the Dharma talk that uh, George Sharp uh, remember so well is about non-self that stuck on his on George Sharp head so long, and then. Uh, thing developed, and then George Sharp turned to be, after Kapilawado uh, died uh, about a week later, not so long after George Sharp met him, and he died, and George Sharp took over, and then he learned that uh, the English Sangha Trust want to support the Sangha, not to teach, not to engage any other thing else, just to support the Sangha, to form the Sangha. So George Sharp get interest and he contact with Ajahn Panyawado at the time he moved to Wat Paban Pan already. And they keep contact in like a weekly basis. And Ajahn Kapiyawado at the time teach George Sharp how the man live. And at the time he quite new for George Sharp. And George Sharp learn. And one day Ajahn Sumedo, young Ajahn Sumedo at the time is about 10 years as a monk. And he went back to visit his parents in California. At that time, they could not fly directly from Thailand to America. They, he had to stop in London, and he had to stop for three days. And uh, Ajahn Panyavudo gave Long Kho Sumedo, Ajahn Sukyang Ajahn Sumedo, a uh, number of George Sharp. And, and if you want to get somewhere to, to stay in London, you can call George Sharp. So Long Kho uh, Sumedo called George Sharp, and George Sharp delight to to meet him, to, and he sent he sent the car to pick up Paul Sumedo, and he spent uh, in in Hampstead Bihara uh, for three days. They talk about how he interest to move to the west, but he opened up, but no one seemed to interest in the in America. No one interest to to support the monk. They like to meditate, they like to practice, but they, no one showed support to the monk. Both of them have the same idea, a similar idea. George Sharp would like to support the monk. Long Paul Sumedo would like to move to England because at that time the communists seemed to move close to Thailand. So he had the intention to invite, if Thailand going to be a communist country, he would like to invite Long Paul Sha to uh, be in England. That is first interest. Uh, th thank you, Thanda Jan Kungrit. Um, do you have the picture of Lopo Cha going on arms now to share? Yes, I do. I did. Uh, perhaps yeah, could you please yeah, uh, share that um, that picture? First, I share I share George Sharp first because people might want to know who George Sharp is in the middle. He's with George Sharp and Lopo Cha and Lopo Sumedo and Lopo Kemadamo, I believe, on, on that one. Can you see my screen? Yeah, 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 we can see. Okay, the next one is uh, Long Po Cha Po for Arms Round in Hampstead Vihara, nearby, this one. Uh, the first one is Long Po, Long po Cha, and the second one, uh, Yang Long Po Sumedo, and Long Po Kemadamo, and another one I think is in Samanera. I could not remember his name. And yeah. at the time he went for Arms Round, and people told him, like uh, a time my pastor told him, told, told us that people uh, try to not encourage Long Po to go for arms round because according to the British law, uh, the like, Vercancy Act, I think 1924, uh, not allow not allow people to go for begging, but Long Po Chao went and two, three days later, what I heard from George Sharp and Long Paul Sumeto, and the police stopped them. But the first day that Long Paul Chao went, they said several people came and offered food. And then I can show you that the, uh, the uh, diary that Long Paul Chao, Long Paul Chao, uh, he keep the diary on the street, the 17th of, of May, 19, uh, 1977. Then you can see here, 
so so we still see this the same screen you need to yes. share the screen i think you need to stop sharing the screen first and then you can open the new one i think that can you see can you see that maybe i see stop this screen yeah maybe I share this screen. screen this one okay this is a longer child handwriting it quite rare because he did as a Thai man he didn't keep diary that much but because he come to England first time so he made the effort to to write down something and you can see that this he went for arms round and people offered him uh, some food so at least he, he do that for for several days. That's what I can remember. Yeah. So this is my first time to see Long Po Cha handwriting. Uh, sorry, Tanajan Kongrit, could you please share them okay. on the screen again? Yeah, I just would like to translate into English. Yes, for those who don't understand Thai, who are not able to read Thai. So Long Po Cha wrote that today. It, is the first day that I go on arms row in London together with um, Ajahn Sumato and who is American and then uh, Gimantapo who is English and then one Samanera. Um, I um, it's not very clear, I'm not quite sure. Yeah. It's like uh, he's, he's French and he's French. And Long Po Cha was then the leader. As a result of this arms row, they have collected enough rice and then two apples, one banana, one orange, one cucumber. Uh, I don't know what is this. Uh, two of something like that. And then, um, yeah, I can't, I can't read. So Long Po, po Cha just said that he, he was very pleased to have received food yeah, from the people. Yeah, so this is from hand, um, handwriting. Right, you, you can stop sharing the screen now. Okay, and I think we, we, go, we should go to the next point. And we have about maybe 40 minutes left. Well, the main... The main point that I would like to discuss with two of you today is how, how Buddhism contributes to the Western world or the Western society. So Ajahn Jekun Lao, from your perspective, you have been living in the UK for over 30 years. You have experience teaching Thai and English people. From your point of view, could you please tell us how Buddhism from Thailand contributes to the English society or the British society? Um, well, after many years in Wimbledon at Kudapajipa Temple first, uh, when I came at that time as a Thai Buddhist monk, I looked at two sides of working that I have been uh, requested to do the job. The first job I do for uh, the temple at Wimbledon at the time is to help the Thai community. And second part, and to be part of the teaching of meditation for the British people. And then because of that, it is how I start involving with the English society, English people. And then I went to another place to Birmingham and then I am now in King's Bombay. After many years here, I see something quite different from the work that I, uh, what, what is um, the, how Thai monks can uh, contribute our uh, Buddha teaching to the West. I must say we are quite far behind equality to help uh, those who very much interest in med uh, in Buddhism, apart from uh, meditation practice alone. This is my personal uh, approach because after many years, I learned that 
most of the people in the West interest in meditation and in Buddhist study, and some of them self study. And then a Thai monks who come to this country, we more or less put our energy toward to the main in the Thai community and also involving ourselves with the culture, involving ourselves with the way of life at the Thai monks where we were in Thailand. That is, I can see. So if you say, how can we make our contribution to the British society of British people? I think, and look at what we have done in the past up to now, I can see a, the Buddhist Thai, Thai Buddhist monks is very good at way in which we have conducted in Thailand. Then we come to this country, we not really involve much with uh, the way in which made it, uh, the Westerner or the British people conducted the system. So I think we can do help the, the people who have the problems by talking, by introducing ourselves to school, also to help the people who need similar like a Thai people. So don't forget, there are many people in society who are not interested in meditation alone or Buddhism alone, but they have also have the problem themselves, similar like a Thai people. Yeah, so, I, I, yeah, I remember that you have some people who have like a mental issues, who are suicidal. And I remember when I was at King's Bombay, Tem uh, King's Bombay Temple many years ago, and there was one man coming to you and said, I want to commit suicide in your temple. Right. Yeah. Oh, yes. You still remember yes. that perhaps you can share oh, your experience yes. with this. Well, after many years now, I think um, uh, since I was in Wimbledon, it was 1998 uh, uh, up to now, almost 40 years. In these 40 years, I uh, um, met or came across in my record, up to 40 people who would like to kill themselves. Yeah, in that 40 people, out of 40, I managed to help 37. So 37. in that 37 people, I saved their life, but four yeah. people, I can't because it's too much. I remember one of them when it was in Madan, uh, have a problem with the, the, uh, the, um, the family. Um, unfortunately, he said, I would like to kill myself it was in Wimbledon, and I talked to him, what you like to do? So I said, he would like to be part of Sangha. So I said, well, in that case, I would like to train you if you really want to become a monk. So I went to Thailand. I said, can you please do this, do this, do this? When I was in Thailand, I will contact the temple there. I will send you to become a monk in Thailand. Everything done very well, very happy. It was about two weeks. Yeah. And then I went to Thailand to get myself ready and then contact with the temple in Rat Mahathat. At the time, we are not really trying to get whoever who interested in Buddhism to become a monk in, uh, in, in, in England at the time. So I came back. I went to the temple to talk to the monk in Thailand that said, we would like to ordain this person because he suffered because the family concerned and his wife walked away with his children. However, when he came back, I saw his picture in front of the Buddha. I said, what happened? Don't you know that he passed away? What happened to him? He took his own life. This I never forget about that, that I couldn't help this person. Yeah, you, but the you, one, you, yeah, that, that, that yeah. one in Wimbledon, yeah? But the one in King's Bombay is different because this one, he would like to kill himself in my temple. Yeah? He said, so, as I remember, and he, just ha he didn't have any problem. He said that there is no point for him to live a life. Yeah. He's, it's like a, he he was bored with his life. Yes, that's right. He was right. spread up in his life, and then he no longer want to live. It's true, yeah. So I said, don't forget because so many cases, but this one survived. That's very good. Yeah. What happened was that uh, this one, his wife died, and he bored about his life. He don't want to be by himself, and uh, he stayed with his lady friend for a week, and then second week, and his lady friend said. I cannot look after him this time because I need to go for holiday with my husband. Can you please look after him for me at least for this period? 
Otis, why? Because he tried to kill himself. So when he came, and then unfortunately at the time, there were about four of, about 10, 15 people uh, who came for meditation retreat, I mean the nun retreat at the time. I remember maybe in July. It's very really good. And then we don't know what to do. So I we kept him in one room. And then after that, what happened? He he asked for the um, uh, paracetamol. And I the said, uh, yes, to, to how many? I said, he, what, he need for 60 paracetamol. I had to take, I said, why you like to have that many? So he said, I would like to kill myself. I would like to sleep. I like to take it and not, will not want to wake up. I said, you can't do it here. You see at the temple, you come here. They, she, you, your lady friend asked me to look after you. If you take 60 palates a month, it's, 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 it's not good. You know, you might can't wake up. He said, yes, that is my, my, in, my, my intention. So I said, no, I can't. So I give him two. Mm. Two cell paracetamol, only two tablets. Right. He yes, said, thank you. You yes, know what he you, Ajahn, yeah? yeah, that's it. And after that, you know what he said? Not enough to die. He said, yes, if you take two tablets and you die, it's, it's, it's too bad. I said that. So mm. anyhow, I went, he was with us for uh, almost a week and his daddy came. And then uh, I looked after him and after that, he survived. Yeah. That is the, the survival one. Yeah. So now I thank you thank you for your um, fortune your experience with all of us now i just would like to come to tanajan come with and do you have the similar experience like what ajan jakunlao said and when the um, local people come to the amarawa they, they said oh i want to kill myself in your ground do you have something like this we have advantage on on that area because we live a little bit far from the city so anyone would like to come to Amaravati, they have to make an effort to come. So not just only pass by, not close to the city, not, not many incidents like that for us. But you know, someone who like a, a little bit off, they so they come to the monastery, it's quite common. Uh, the thief always comes and to shit her for some time, Rung Po Sume told, told a story of uh, the uh, traveler, the gypsy, they come to the monastery, look like show the interest, and one of them talked to Long Po, and another one went to the workshop and took all the tools that we have, things like that. Um, incident like this, I could not recall, I could not remember. And because of uh, the monastery is about four, 35 years and she turned 40 years, uh, I think there's, there might be something they need to ask the senior monk. Uh, they might know more. But for us, most of the time that we can, we help people in, with their meditation, meditation workshop on Saturday, very popular. The Saturday workshop and uh, retreat, retreat, we have 16 retreats a year that are very popular in, in our. Yeah, in our I have heard that the retreat at um, Amaravati. Buddhist monastery is always fully booked. Yes, it's always fully fully booked. booked. Um, yes. Perhaps could you please share the photos with us? And if you have, if you have them, but if you don't, no worry. Um, oh, so, could so, you please sorry, tell I us a little bit what, what the, Amara, the Amaravati monastery does for the local community or for the, for the local people? For example, you offer retreats, meditation workshops. Could you please tell us a little bit more? The meditation retreat is uh, something like uh, we allow people to come for two days, uh, three days, or maximum five days or 13 days. It's a maximum retreat. And people, they can come and they free of charge and they are uh, to make donation, but they, we don't charge anything from them. If they like to donate, they can donate. If they don't like to, it's okay. And we have separate in a meditation center in the monastery, the monk ourselves. We do only teaching and guiding meditation. We, all the rest is from there. They have the team, they call retreat manager team, and they organize everything. 
in cooking, they have another team to come and cook, another team to come and clean the place. And people seem to be very interested. And even now, in the, with the coronavirus like this, we start to looking for the retreat that we can do online, if it's possible, we might, we might do in the future, in the near future. Uh, thank you. Perhaps I would like to share the um, picture yes. from the Amaravati. And can you see it on the screen now? Could you please tell us where, where is this place? Um, none of them, I think. None of them in this photo. Um, well, what, what I mean is that, could you please tell, tell us? And what is this place? Well, I think yeah, it is the Uposta. is the Uposta. The, the Uposta, Uposta. At that time, we have IEM International Elder Meeting. We have for, for one in four years. And then the monks, Western monks around the world come to meet in, in some place in Amaravati, in Chitad, or in Wapananachad, or in other places that can help the meeting. Yeah, I can see Ajahn Amaro, Ajahn Sujit Garunigo. Yeah, I think Ajahn Garunigo. Okay. Ordination ceremony. I could not see your screen at the moment. You can't see the, you can't see the screen? No, you can't see your screen. So, uh, so tiny. It's so tiny. Yeah? Oh, it's yeah. tiny. Okay, I better stop sharing the screen then. Uh, well, Ajahn Lao, you, 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 if you still remember, then for the you post on Temple Facebook page, became famous in Thailand. And if you still remember that um, photo, and um, people in Thailand said, well, now in the UK, the school children came to learn Buddhism, chanting twice a week. Could you please tell us more about that, about what happened? What actually happened? Well, it, it's my temple uh, chanting room. Normally, we have quite a number of students or boy scouts and girls and who visit the temple in the, in the, the term time. So that in the term time, uh, each school in Staffordshire, we have about 200 uh, schools in the area they have good connection between the temple uh, because I am the member of uh, Sacre is uh, about education area. So the temple invite, uh, they, they book the temple to visit and also to learn meditation. All of this is a part of our uh, temple activities that we have quite a number of those who interest in Buddhism, uh, boys, scouts, and uh, many. So all of the, the visit just all the period, only one, one time, each group. So there are nothing to do with uh, involving with Buddhism in school. But of course, in this country at the moment, Buddhism is more or less popular. Buddhism is one of the six uh, world Buddhist uh, religions, uh, world religion. So children and scouts and whoever come to visit the temple and learn Buddhism and meditation, including I teach them how to about how to pay respect, how to meditate. That is part, including the uh, offer the arms to the monks. This is part of our work that we're doing in the temple now in, in the Sabuchia. Uh, thank you, thank you. And we are running out of time now. So Jan Kulit, would you like to tell us about the, the Amaravati Monastery? Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, Amaravati Monastery, we have the long-term plan for rebuild the monastery because the monastery that we the property the, the building that we have it meant to be for the for the the, the uh, summer the summer house is not for the winter and after Ajahn Amaro took over from Long Sumatra ten years ago is uh, now twenty five. 10 years, five days now, and look for Ajahn Amaru moved to Amaravati. He had the idea to rebuild, to rebuild Amaravati 
30 year plan. And now we start to build two, three buildings and to make it more uh, in, well insulated and energy saving and re jiggling the site to make it more uh, useful and uh, practical because at this time it, it, the room is so small and uh, and the monks when because the building is not so good even the fire brigade when they if any fire incident the fire brigade told us they won't drop any water in our property because it's too late it will be too late that what Ajahn Amarun had in his mind and he, he planned to rebuild the monastery. Can you see my screen? Yeah, we can see, see the it. screen. Yeah, maybe, yeah, we can scroll up. That's the one that the one is built, the, the building that we start to build. And we demolish anything that is uh, not really usable. It's okay to use, but when we turn on the heater, it will dis disappear. One of the, lo uh, the local um, MP came to visit us. I think uh, Sir Mike Penny, he, he came and he, he told us that, and um, he can see that from helicopter that the, from the, uh, what it called, I the cannot drone. remember the, the drone. name of that. When you can thermal, 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 thermal you can see the heat, the heat sick, sick thermometer, and we are glowing. And uh, when we check the energy used for Amaravati is about 400 households, the same, the same price as 400 households use it a lot. So we could not pay the bill. So the Ajahn Amaru, after he took over from Osumeto, he planned that this one, we redo re everything just to make sure that everything is energy saving and in the long Term, we can the building can last for a thousand years. It was the, the idea would. Okay, thank you, Ajahn Kungrit. Um, we have about ten minutes from now. I want to share the screen. Um, now we have about twenty six Thai temples in the UK. So I would like to share the screen and then we will come to the conclusion. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if you can see the screen. Yes, I can see. Okay. So I will go through this quickly. And this is um, the activities of the of the Buddha Batipa temple. And inside the main temple and once a year we have the non retreat. And we normally have the, the non retreat in July. And we have winter retreats, uh, three winter retreats a year. It's open to the, the, the English speaking adults. I can see only the folder and I, can, I could not see oh. the folder. Okay, I must check what happened. Uh, Ajahn Lok, can you see this, the picture? No, no, when uh, Hongrit can't see, how can I say it? It's the same. Oh, okay. There must be something wrong. I don't know what happened. Uh, okay. You can only see the folder, not, not the picture. That's right. Okay. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> well, let's come to the last point that I want to discuss with two of you. And the question is, from your experience, from your point of view, from your experience, what are the strengths and weakness of Thai Buddhist mission to the UK? And we have been here for nearly 60 years, the EV cult from 1966. And Amaravati has been in the UK for 40 years. 35. Yeah, 45 years. Yeah, Buddha Batipa Temple, um, in 1966, yeah, until now. And from a Chan Lao point of view, you have experience. So what do you think 
are the strength and weakness of Thai Buddhist mission to the UK? Well, I think personally, um, monks who came to England, we are not expert in some uh, particular area. For example, meditation. We are not expert in anything, but we come to serve the community. We have been working uh, totally very, very hard to support the community and also to help the people in local. We try our best with quality that we have. However, the way in which we see what is strength of Buddhism is we have to have expert in the area like Amaravati temple. They go that one only one direction, this is very good. But the Thai monks, every temple, we go uh, every direction. So this is our weakness. Because if we see, because you cannot good at everything, you can good with, if I like to say we are more like, like a duck, yeah? Mm. But if you need expertise, so you can be whatever you like to be, like to be either you prefer to be a bird, I to be to be a, a fish, whatever, but the duck is not very good. So I have seen this is our problems. The temple in King's Bombay, we teach meditation, but not expertise. We teach Thai language, we're not expertise. We help society and also we teach chanting. So this is the not, I don't like to use the word as it's the strength or weak, but this is the way in which we conducted ourselves since then. We are not expert in one field. So that is strength if we can have someone who can speak. I don't like to use the word English because can we can speak English, but one thing that Thai monks enjoy being with Thai community, enjoy being with ourselves, our society, isolated from real community of local community. That is can be look at two sides, for my opinion. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Tanajan Kongrit. And what about you? I think the strength, the strength is if we can cut, we can do the, uh, we can speak local language, if we can speak English more, and then we learn about their culture. If we know them, we start to know them. Like in Amaravati, we have family camp, family camp once a year, apart from this year. And when we have family camp like that, children come and then they learn from the early age, how to behave, how to contact with the monk, how to uh, react and participate in the monastic uh, way of life. They know now so many of them, they interest in Buddhism and then they support us. And anything we can support them because in, in Amaravati, in our tradition, we don't, we don't do too much culture, cultural thing. And most of the time we call, we call us what for example, we do something that uh, local people can relate to and mainly the interest in meditation, the interest in uh, Buddhism, we support that for them. And then many Westerners or them, and then we can, uh, we can share our idea, we can share our knowledge with them more. And we no need to start. Uh, may I ask you a question? So from your observation, from your experience, what do you think the local people think about Amaravati? Do, and does their attitude change over the years? And because, I think they, yeah, from, I my, think from my experience, they, when they first came to, to England as a monk, for example, when Ajahn Lao and travel by bus, the young people like to tease like a, to abuse verbally. But over the years, from my experience, when I go to the town, like when I go, I mean, I travel by bus, there is no shut sh an, an incident. So most teenage and boys or girls come in pay respect with their two hands. So my question is, do you think the attitude of local people change from of, over the town? I think they change all the time. For me, my experience in London, if I travel to, in, to London, they never abuse me verbally. Actually, they, they might tease 
they might they see me as a Shaolin monk, for example. Sometimes they one one incident, I walk in London to treat my back pain, and they took two youngsters run up ran after me, and then he just stopped in front of me and do like a boxing, and then. I yeah, thought, because yeah, I thought that we have, we have formed Shaolin Temple. Shaolin, yes. And yeah. at, at first I thought they might hit me. I just, oh, I, what, I don't know what to do. Instead of they doing anything, they asked me, can you teach me Kung Fu? Can you teach me Kung Fu? And okay. I told them that I, I can teach you meditation, but not Kung Fu. But Muay Thai, I learned a little bit, but I, I could not teach you either. And they laughed and left. But mm -hmm. now, People seem to go and they like to do anjali, and sometimes they like to hit with the, like a high five, high five like that. Just local people, local boy, and many people, many young children, many young teenager, they come and they like to uh, be Buddhist because they look cool. They want to be cool like us. They, many of them like, especially our children. Yes, hairstyle. Cool. Right. Yeah. Perhaps Ajahn Lao, do do you have something, some experience to share with, with, with us? Because you have you seem to live in the UK for many years. Well, I think I can uh, uh, see what we uh, been through all of this, uh, either positive and negative. I think uh, after many years that we been in this country. At the beginning, of course, it's very, very bad experience because a lot of people don't really like Buddhist monk or don't like foreigner or don't like anything. Uh, there's something strange. But from then up to now, I must say the benefit of the quality of Buddhism, Buddha teaching, including the way in which East Temple teach the children who come to visit. Can you imagine women and temple alone? So many thousand a year. And my temple may some be some hundred a year, and East Temple throughout the country, and over thirty years, forty years, that means they absorb something and change into their life. Then you can see a lot of the children on the street pay respect to you and palm their hand to you, say hello to you. That means equality of Buddhism come to their heart, to their local heart and the feeling. And I must say, throughout the period of the being a monk in this country. And I must say, chain uh, day after day, week after week, year after year, month after. So all of this have been changed in positive way. So we gain so much of being a Buddhist monk, teaching Buddhism in England together. So I like to say, this is my opinion and I, my sharing about what experience I have had throughout the year from Wimbledon to Birmingham to Staffordshire. And thank you very much for my, my opinion for today. Yeah, Thank you very much for having me today. And I wish everything will be really good for us for showing our quality that we have in the Buddha teaching to the local people. Thank you. OK, thank you to both of you. Um, well, this is the part of the um, online activities by the Council of Thai Buddhist Monks. And we have the Thai version on the fourth Thursday and at 1 to 2 p.m. But for English version, we have the Dharma discussion on the fourth Saturday. And as I said earlier, that we try to support our members and friends. And because at the moment, most temples remain closed. <laughs> So for those who miss meditation or Buddhist activities, perhaps online session like a meditation on Zoom or any kind of chanting on Facebook Live can help at least to fill the gap. So again, I would like to say thank you to Tanajan Dukun Para Bitit Banyakun Tanajan Praku Samu Kongrit. Ratana uh, one no, and also uh, thank you to our friends and audience who was on Facebook Live. We will see you again next fourth Saturday of August. Thank you. <laughs>